How about some tricks of the trade when it comes time to bust a nut? Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. The purpose of today's video is to make a nut for this bass because this bass sold the other day and it's time to, uh, to get it ready to go. So what we have to do is we need to make a nut for it. And I've been getting a lot of questions lately about like, hey, how do you do this? What, what about this? How about, how about when this happens? So I thought I'd make a quick video and give you guys some, uh, some tricks that I have uh, been using for a long time. I don't know if they're tricks, but you might, you might get some ideas. Uh, you, maybe you're using these already and you'd be like, that's not a trick. I've been using that for years. Okay, fine. Um, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you guys some, uh, some of the ins and outs of, uh, of shaping and, and slotting a nut for this base. So it's Saturday morning and the first thing that you should do on Saturday morning is go to the fridge and heat up a breakfast burrito because you're going to need lots of energy, sustained fuel for, um, uh, for, for the guitar work that you're about to get done. So we're going to start with that first and then we're going to jump right in. <laughs> okay gang, that was a good burrito. I wasn't jiving you. I actually did eat a burrito. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, there are, to by the way guys, there's tools all over the place. The shop is a disaster area. We're going to move fast, so you're going to see a bunch of mess and you're going to see me in a bunch of different spots. But the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our nut blank and we're going to fit it to our nut slot in the, uh, in the neck here. And um, uh, I'm going to show you a couple tricks to get that done right. All right, what we're going to start with is, uh, like I said, I got my neck here. It's uh, propped up. It's still in the body, so don't, don't sweat it. Um, I've got a nut blank here. This is a bone nut blank. You guys can use whatever you want, of course. But you can see it doesn't fit in the slot, okay? So what we want to do is we want to get it thicknessed so that it fits in the slot here. Now, you could spend a lot of time measuring and doing this, that, and the other. You could, you could buy a nut blank that will probably fit, but most of them are oversized. So even if you get one that's really, really close, here's what I like to do. Uh, I've got a piece of MDF on my bench. The reason I have a piece of MDF is because I know it's flat, okay? So I'm going to, and I got a piece of, uh, of sandpaper. This is some, um, uh, some Kling Spore 120. And I'm using 120 because I want to remove a bunch of material. So let me move my guitar neck out of the way here. Um, I want to start by um, indexing the nut on the paper, and I'm going to run it across the paper. Uh, I don't know. Let's say one, two, three, four, five times. Okay. Then I'm going to take my nut, and I'm going to flip it over onto the other side and do the exact same thing. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it to the other side, but I'm not going to do it like I did before. I'm actually going to do it this way and go one, two, three, four, five. Come back. Now I'm going to flip it over to the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Now the purpose of doing that and flipping it back and forth the way that I did is because imagine if I'm just say for the sake of conversation, I'm pressing more on the back corner and um, and the 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 opposite side middle. Uh, if I take and orient it the other way, and then orient it the other way, and then orient it the other way, it should be about as level as I can get it with my um, with my hand. Okay, so let's check and see. We're getting closer. To fitting. In fact, it's almost fitting. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing again until we get the thing fit. All right. All right. So actually, man, it's so close. Let's we'll do just a few more. There we go. And as you can see, now our nut is so close, it wants to just slide in there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to a different grit of sandpaper so I don't have 120 grit scratches in my final nut. All right, I'm going to switch out my 120 for some 220. I'm going to grab my nut out of the slot here, and I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing. It's going to take my nut to the right thickness. Um, 
and it's going to get rid of all the 120 scratches which is a good thing because I want my nut to look nice too you know what I mean I don't just want it to I don't just want it to be excellent I want it to look excellent oh man that's almost look look see I can't actually get it all the way in that's almost perfect we're gonna hand fit it the rest of the way all right my calculations are correct happy meal for me okay so that looks pretty excellent I don't know if we I think we, we can see that in the shot here so the nut slides right in it's um, uh, it's, it's it's not wiggling around it's exactly perfectly right of course we're gonna glue this in so but we want to have a nice a nice fit okay now I happen to know that this nut slot is flat on the bottom so that's a good deal but what I want to do is I want to make the the um, the the part of the nut that rides uh, on the bottom of the nut slot I want to make sure that's flat too okay so I'm gonna come back over to my my 120 grit I've marked the bottom of the nut and I'm gonna take this uh, this ruler that my friend Brad made for me I'm gonna put that on my sandpaper and I'm gonna use that as a guide to um, to put a nice flat bottom on my nut blank okay you could use anything you want provided it gives you a nice flat surface if it's if it's a little taller that's going to help hold the nut in the um, uh, where it needs to be but if it's too tall you can't get it in there right okay so but look at that it's boom it's done um, we're going to fit it you can't rock it back and forth it fits in there nice so that's a cool thing all right all right now what we got to do is as you can plainly see we have way too much nut meat on the um, on the side of this so we could cut it off both sides but that seems kind of silly let's just cut it off one side so I'm gonna move the nut most of the way over in the slot so there's a little bit poking out the other side and I'm going to take a sharp pencil and I'm going to make a line where the um, where the neck is okay and as you can see that's gonna get us very very close to um, to where where we need to be now what I want to do is I want to cut this I want to cut this chunk off oh one thing I also want to do is I want to mark with a that's supposed to be a check mark okay <laughs> this is the this is the side that we want to make sure to use that goes in the slot this is the in the slot side and uh, the front and back aren't gonna matter right now but whoa, what we want to do is we want to uh, cut the rest of this nut chunk off all right let's do that now all right, I'm gonna actually put this in my Stumac nut vise because my Stumac nut vise has never let me down, okay? And I'm gonna just use a regular old handsaw to, uh, to, trim this, to trim this back. Dang. Remember I told you there was tools and junk all over the place? I wasn't lying. Pew! Smells like the dentist's office in here. All right, we got our nut. Our nut is cut down to roughly the right size. Let's go back over to our guitar and fit it the rest of the way. We're just going to take the same exact setup that we had before and fit the nut to the slot. Actually, you know what? That's fine exactly where it is. We're just gonna, have, gonna go ahead and leave it that way. Um, because this neck doesn't have any finish on it, we can fine tune that later, all right? So now let's move on to step number two. All right, gang, our nut, as I said, is fit just about exactly where it needs to be. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to trace the radius onto the nut. All right, and um, all right, so this is all, uh, whoa, this 
line here represents everything that is going to be inside the uh, the actual neck. Everything up here is going to be on the uh, on the on the outside of the neck. Obviously, that's way too much material. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to put a line, another line, on top. Oh, get in the camera there. Okay, so now we have two lines. Um, what we want to do is we want to remove all the material on the top next. All right, let me move the camera. All right, so again, now I can get the damn thing in the piece here. So you can see all that stuff on the top needs to come off. Now, um, you might be like, well, how do I know that I've got the, exactly the right amount of, of, uh, of meat left over? Well, what we're shooting for is right at a hundred thousandths from the top of the nut to the top of the fretboard. That's just a, a general rule that I like to go by. If you're a hundred thousandths, um, you, you, got, you got plenty, all right? So I, I kind of know, that that's probably not exactly a hundred thousandths, but I know from doing this enough times that, um, that that's what that looks like. You could obviously put this back in the, um, in the, the, um, the, the neck here, and you could put like a hundred thousandths shim or something that's bendable or something on there. And, to get it exactly right, but we're gonna fine tune it later, so don't sweat if it's not 100% perfect, okay? All right, now I'm gonna show you, here's where some of the tricks come in. I've got this paint stick. Guys, if you're not using paint sticks for all kinds of stuff around your shop, you're doing it wrong, okay? One, they're free. Two, they come in really handy. All right, so what we're gonna do is I've got some double stick tape here. And I'm gonna take a hunk of it, and I'm gonna put it on my paint stick, okay? And then, I'm going to put my nut blank onto this hunk of double stick tape here and press it down. Now I can hold this back way back here and I can use all kinds of power tools to shape this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Well, guys, I know I goof around a lot and I, I, I make jokes, but uh, when it comes to shop safety, I'm, I'm dead serious, okay? Um, so uh, the, the, the nice thing about this, this stick with your nut on there is you can, look how far away your hand is from the, uh, the cutting area, okay? Having the ability to push this through a bandsaw or a sander without having to get your fingers super close to a bandsaw blade or a, or a power sander, um, it's gonna keep you safer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you do something stupid, then then I guess then I guess that don't do that. But um, uh, let let's try to start with as many fingers as uh, uh, let's try to end with as many fingers as we start with. Cool. Okay. All right. Let me show you what I'm talking about, and I think this will make a lot more sense. All right. So I'm just gonna grind away all this stuff up here. So get a load of that. It looks pretty close to the line. Now I'm gonna sand to the line and if I leave it on my stick, I can hold the stick instead of the nut. Looks pretty good. Let's go back to the nut vise. All right, gang, if you don't have a bandsaw, you don't have a power sander, you don't have to worry about that last, that last step. But um, here's one thing that I think has been a real, a, a, a very cool technique that we've been using for a long time. Um, uh, when you're shaping your, your, the top of your nut to match the radius of your fretboard, well, heck, I use these Stumac radius blocks to, to shape the top, because then it's perfect every time. Um, so uh, people, I show this to people and they're like, oh yeah, how come I didn't think of that? Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, I guess sometimes it's good to, uh, to watch other people and see what they're up to. This is just one of the Stumac radius blocks. And um, 
and we're going to uh, match the top of the nut to the, the actual fretboard radius using this block. So um, let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, first thing I like to do is uh, put a little bit of, um, of a witness mark on, my, uh, on the top of my nut. This is a 12 inch radius block and this nut is actually 10, but I'm gonna start with this 12 because it's got a more aggressive paper on it. Okay, now I, I just used the radius block to do this. My witness marks are all gone, which means that this nut should now be 12 inch radius. Okay, easy deal. All right. Now, since my, uh, my fretboard is 10, and since the, really the difference between 10 and 12 ain't that much, I'm gonna switch to a different radius block. This has, um, this has a finer grip paper on it. Okay. I don't know if you guys could see it, but there was, there was marks that were, um, they were going away on the, on the ends before they were going away in the center. Now everything matches the 10 inch radius block and we should be able to go over to our neck and see how much uh, we have sticking out above the, uh, the nut slot. Okay gang, we're back at the neck. I put my nut in the slot. It fits like a million bucks. It looks like a million bucks. The radius perfectly matches the, the fretboard, I believe. I got my Stumac digital calipers here. These are the Luthier calipers. One thing you have to keep in mind is when you're using these, you have to make sure to, if you're gonna use this, if you're gonna use this section here, which is what we're gonna use, we have to account for the notch because they put a notch in there so that, um, uh, so you can measure fret height, okay? <clears throat> so we're going to zero, zero the calipers, and then we're gonna come over to our nut slot. Remember, we want 100 thousandths here, okay? One, zero, zero. I, I, I'm not bullshitting you. This I actually did. <laughs> I've never gotten it on the first try. Okay, then we're gonna move to the middle of the nut. Nine, nine. And we're gonna move to the end of the nut. Nine, nine. Okay, it doesn't get any closer than that. Okay, so um, that's a couple of cool tricks to uh, make, uh, make fitting a nut a little easier. So let's take a quick moment to review. Okay, gang, like I was saying, that's a handful of tricks to help help you out on your journey to uh, get nuts fitted exactly right. You can imagine that if you have a neck that isn't a fender style, you could still use some of these techniques. Um, if you have a, a fender style nut and it's got a curved top, it's not gonna exactly work the same, but you can use some of the same techniques. Generally speaking, what I do with a fender nut that's <clears throat> curved is if I'm doing it for me, I always, always, always grind it flat. If, uh, if I, if back in the day when I was doing repairs, I would ask a customer, do you mind if I grind it flat? Cause it's way easier to use. Um, so anyway, but that, that's, that's a story for another day. All right, so we used a handful of cool tools. We used the Stuart McDonald calipers, by the way, link in the description below to all these tools. We used the Stumac uh, calipers, the Luthiers calipers. These are super cool. Um, and by the way, all these tools are included in every single toolbox that we have here at Texas Toast for our workshops. Luthier's calipers and uh, nut vise, okay? Get you one of these. Uh, get you a set of, of, of if you're gonna start doing nuts and you have any guitars or your friends come over and they're like, I want you to do my nut too. You're gonna need one of these vices. You're gonna need a set of those calipers. Um, the other thing is uh, these Stumac radius blocks. Okay, this one's a nine and a half. I've got a zillion of these things floating around. Um, all mine have a little Texas Toast custom guitars thing branded in on them. Um, uh, these are maple. They used to, you used to be able to get them in like aluminum and stuff. Um, the cool thing about a lot of this stuff is Stu Mac just lowered the prices on a bunch of these tools. And um, so get you guys some of this stuff and, uh, and put it to work. Uh, lifetime warranty on everything that Stu Mac sells and uh, they, they will not let you down. I've had, God, I've had some of this stuff for you decades okay so anyway uh this is a terrific terrific tool but don't worry if you don't have a lot of money to spend on tools i even give you guys some cool free tools like this um this paint stick idea if you're not using paint sticks like i said you're doing it wrong paint sticks and a sharp pencil and you could probably do i don't know if you had a file you could do a lot of this stuff 
I guess you wouldn't really need the paint stick. You need the vice. So anyway, you guys see what I'm talking about. So um, uh, guys, if you have any questions about what we did in the video today, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this kind of thing and you want to help us out, you might consider supporting us on either YouTube or Patreon. Um, uh, it, you know, even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat content like this. If you can't do that though, no sweat. We totally get it. Just share the video as many places as you can possibly think of and help us grow the channel that way. Now, if you guys want more information about how to cut nuts and how to do nut slots and how to do everything guitar related, please consider coming out to one of our workshops. We are booking for 2024 right now and slots are filling up quick. We've got a bunch of neat stuff happening. We've got um, uh, we've got some neck through classes. We've got some carve top classes. We got the 51 no caster. We've got lots of strats and telly stuff. We're, we have our set neck thing. Anything that you want to do, you want to leave here with a super cool guitar that's ready to play, we got you covered. You want to come out and do everything, starting with just a bunch of sticks of wood, we got you covered. So, um, so think Texas Toast when you're ready to start building your guitars, and uh, we will see you in the wood shop. So until next time, guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you next time, guys. Have a great week. Don't play my guitar, the only